Welcome to my lecture online. So let's start out with a very simple example, one for which we can find the limits very easily. And the limits are not going to be functions, they're simply going to be constants. But just to get the overall idea of how to perform triple integrals in Cartesian or rectangular coordinates. So here what we have is we have a cube. In the x direction the length is 3, the width in the y direction is 2, and the height in the z direction is equal to 1 unit. And we're trying to find the mass of that object given that the density is the linear function of z. And the linear function is as follows, that the density is equal to 2 minus z. So when z is equal to 0, the density is 2. When z equals 1, the density is 1. So the density varies from 2 to 1 in a linear fashion. We also should know that the density by definition is equal to the mass of an object divided by its volume, or the mass is equal to the density times the volume. And for any small volume element, dv, the amount of mass for that is equal to the density times that small volume element. So the dm is equal to the density times dv. This letter here is the Greek letter rho that represents density. So if we then want to find the mass, we're going to have to integrate over all those small little dms. And notice that in this case, dm is the density function, which is 2 minus z, times the, the volume element dz dy dx. And we're going to try to integrate z first, then y, then x, but in this case it really wouldn't ma matter which order we do it in. And so we replace the density function by 2 minus z, so this is going to be our triple integral. Now, what are going to be the limits? Now, in this case, it's fairly easy. Notice that the lowest that z can be is 0, and the highest it can be is 1. And notice that there's no change in the upper. It's not like it's bulging up or a semi-sphere or semi-cylindrical uh, shape or anything like that. It's simply the highest value is 1 and the lowest value is z. It's simply the integral, uh, the uh, limits of integration is going to go from 0 to 1. For the z variable, for the y variable, it's going to go from 0 to 2. And for the x variable, we're going to integrate from 0 to 3. So there it's very straightforward to see what the limits of integration are going to be. In our next examples, it's not going to be as straightforward. All right, that means that the first integral we're going to do is over the variable z. Now notice, typically we said we're going to keep the other, uh, the other um, constant, x and y constant, but there's no x and y in the function, so we don't even have to worry about it. We're simply going to integrate 2 minus z dz. And so that means that we end up with the following. So the mass is going to be equal to, we still have the other two integrals, and so that would be from y equals 0 to 2, and from x equals 0 to 3, and then in the z direction, so we have 2 minus z integrated, so 2, inter 2 dz integrated becomes 2z, minus z integrated becomes z squared over 2. And that's going to be evaluated from 0 to 1. We still have dy and dx. So when we plug in the lower limit, we'll get nothing. When we plug in the upper limit, we get, this is the double integral of, when we set that equal to 1, we get 2 times 1 minus 1 over 2, which is 1 half. So that's 2 minus a half times dy dx. The limit of integration is 0 to 2 and 0 to 3. And so this becomes one and a half or three halves, and that's a constant which can come outside the integral sign. So this is equal to three halves times the double integral of dy dx. And so the next integral we're going to integrate is over y, the limits of integration from zero to two. And so this becomes equal to three over two times, we still have our first integral here, this is from zero to three, zero to three. And when we integrate dy, we get y, and that's going to be evaluated from 0 to 2. We still have our dx here. Again, we plug in the lower limit, we get nothing, but plug in the upper limit, we get 2. So this becomes equal to 3 over 2 times 2 times the integral of over dx from 0 to 3. Notice that the 2's cancel, and we end up with just a 3 in the front. Now we can integrate dx, which becomes x, so this is equal to 3 times x evaluated from 0 to 3. Plug in the lower limit, you get nothing. Plug in the upper limit, we get 3 times 3, which is equal to 9. And that is then the result of what we're looking for. That is the mass of that object. Now, what is that? 
Well, we don't know the units. It could be kilograms, it could be grams, it could be tons. We don't know the, what the units are, but at least we know the methodology. That is how we perform a simple integral, a triple integral, in the rectangular coordinates. What happens if you uh, integrate over dx first? You would get the exact same result. So yeah, so you can do this in any order, especially since the limits of integration are just constants, you can really interchange the order and it would not make any difference at all. Get the exact same result. You don't want to prove it? No, we don't need to. It's too straightforward. We can go ahead and take my word for that. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> you wouldn't. Well, then you try it. See what you, see what you get. I'll leave that up to you. You're the, you're the expert at the editing job. In the thumbnails? In the thumbnails and everything else.